Hello guys, welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to convert geospatial vector data of formats like uh, .shp, basically s shape files, to file formats that can be read by common CAD software like uh, AutoCAD. Now following that, in the second part of the tutorial, we will see how to do that process but in reverse. So to demonstrate this to you guys, I'm using one shapefile called uh, the provinces of Costa Rica as you can see over here. It's a .shp file, an S shape file. So I'm just going to drag it and drop it over here. You can actually further confirm the, the data type simply by going over here to the properties of this layer. And you can see that the data type is a shape file feature class. So if you want to convert this into a file format, basically the file format that we're talking about here in this tutorial is the .dwg file format, which is a very common file format uh, used by CAD software like AutoCAD. And we're going to see how we can do that conversion. It's, it's quite a simple and a straightforward process. Well, all you have to do is right click over here, go to data and select export to CAD. And you can see that in the input features, since we directly worked with the layer itself, the layer has already been added into these in input features. And the output type, well, this basically defines the version that you would like to use. I'm going to use a version that's a bit old. I'm going to go with DWG R2010. And the output file path, I'm going to specify my working folder, which is uh, going to be this number 18. And there's a folder called .dwg, so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to name this as Costa Rica Provinces .dwg. Right after that, I can simply click OK for the tool to run, and after a couple of seconds, you can see that the the tool got executed, and we have a file called Costa Rica Provinces, which is a dot which is a DWG file, which can be opened using AutoCAD. So I'm going to double click over here. And as you can see over here, we successfully managed to convert the province's shape file into a DWG file that can be read using AutoCAD. Well, something to keep in mind about AutoCAD is that AutoCAD is actually using a 2D and 3D Cartesian coordinate system that locate uh, data at fixed coordinates. So when we basically talk about values for X, Y, and Z, the actually locations relative to an arbitrary geometric origin and it's basically using the same coordinates uh, let's say of the vertices in this case in order to draw the polygons just as what we had in this shape file now for example if you would like to do a quick check you can see that when i move my mouse point over here the values generally tend to be in the in the range of uh, negative 85 for longitude and about 10 for latitude and if i zoom into somewhere over here and if i click on one of these polygons you can see that it actually shows us the vertices by which this polygon has been created so if i zoom in a bit further and if i just click on one of the vertices well before i click if i just hover my mouse point over here and if i right click and go to properties you can see my vertex x and vertex y. Well, in this case, the vertex x is corresponding to longitude and vertex y is corresponding to latitude. So you can see that the values are actually correct, even though we do not really have a concept of specifying a specific coordinate reference system uh, within AutoCAD itself. All right, I guess you guys can remember that I had another DWG file. If I open up my folder, you can see that I have another DWG file called road network. So let's just open this one up. Well, what this one shows us is basically the network of main roads of Costa Rica. Now you can see that I have a specific tab over here open for this road network file and this was the file that we were working with previously. Now what I'm trying to demonstrate to you guys is that how we can bring this road network file back into ArcGIS. And before I do that, if I wanted to do a quick check just to make sure whether this road network properly tally when it comes to its uh, spatial extent when compared with this uh, Costa Rica provinces file, what I can do is I can actually try to copy this and paste it over here so that we can visually see whether it actually fits properly or not. And to do that, you can see that if I were to select individual line by line, it's going to take me a while. When using AutoCAD, one of the easiest ways of actually selecting stuff is simply by clicking somewhere over here. And you can see that as I hover my mouse pointer over the entire network of lines, and if I click again somewhere over here, everything gets selected. And now 
to copy everything all i have to do is press ctrl c and come back over here and what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to type a command and the command that i'm going to type is paste orange and this is a very commonly used AutoCAD command and what this paste orange command does is it's actually pasting objects from the clipboard into our current drawing using the original coordinates. So it's actually going to take all the original coordinates from the original drawing which was this road network file that we had over here and it's going to paste everything into this current drawing making sure that all the coordinates are exactly the same as what it was in the original drawing. So I'm going to enter over here and as you can see, it tallies perfectly. So I'm not going to have any issues of uh, having to arrange it due to any potential mismatches. As I told you guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to export this back into a shape file. And let's say for some reason, I would like to make a slight change. Let's say I would like to get rid of this part of the road network. So I'll just select it and simply hit delete. And now I'm left with only a part of the road network. And uh, let's imagine that I would like to bring this one into my ArcMap working space. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and click on this big A button. And I'm going to go to save as. And I will save this in a bit of a lower version. And I'm going to name this one as road network R1. And save. All right, now let's go back to our ArcMap working space. And for the time being, let me go ahead and remove this. And now I'm going to click on this Add Data button. And I'm going to navigate to my folder to which I saved this new uh, amended file. And we can see that we have a file called road network r1.dwg and add and now you can see that that road network got added into our working space. Now you can see that the file that got added actually have a couple of things over here. Well, following the file name that we gave, we have annotations, points, polylines, polygons, multi-patch. And if I expand this polyline item and if I deselect this, you can see that the road network actually disappears. But despite what I do to the other checkboxes over here, you can see that it doesn't really affect this set of lines. So now I guess you guys can get the idea that if I had some annotations, let's say some text transferred from AutoCAD into ArcGIS, then that would come under this option. And if I had points, that would appear under this. And since I had just polylines, it's actually just appearing under this. And similarly, if I had polygons, it's going to appear under this. We'll still keep in mind that this particular polyline is actually not really a shape file just yet. If you go over to the properties, you can see that the data type is still a CAD polyline feature class. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this into a shape file. And for that, all I have to do is select right click over here, go to data and select export data. Again, make sure that you're actually selecting the CAD uh, polyline feature class over here. And I'm going to name this as, well, now I'm going to put this into the shape files folder and I'm going to name this as road network.shp it's going to be a shape file so i'm going to save this and click ok and i will say that i would like to add this data into my working space and after that i will get rid of this group layer like this and now if i go over here to the properties you can see that and now it's a shape file feature class uh, just like what you can see over here Alright, so that's about it for this quick tutorial. If you do have any questions related to the things that we discussed in this tutorial, don't forget to add them down below in the comments box and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. So thanks a lot for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one.